Good morning, everybody. It's Kathleen Cook here at The Engine, and uh, I am so excited to uh, this morning be talking about a topic that links to a service that we do here at The Engine. This topic is all about CEOs and company owners, and uh, you know, your company needs clear leadership and you need a break. I'm joined in person this morning with the uh, leading leadership specialist, uh, Christine Rankin, um, along with leading customer experience specialist, Peter Cook, and both of them are advisors in the engine. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. So nice to have you here in Auckland, Christine, and not, uh, we've got the sun out today, so we can't even be talking about uh, it being cold <laughs> or anything silly like that, so... Look, um, and Peter, you're uh, you're sitting in there with a, a West Ham jersey behind you. Is is that who you support? Absolutely, oh. always a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone's watching us and they're not a hammer, then uh, you can leave at any point. Um, so look, we've all discussed on previous episodes the important leadership uh, has on the success of an organisation. There's a reason why employees have a minimum of a four weeks break in a year. It is to recharge their batteries. Owners need to do the same too. Sadly, it's not an option for many. Why do you think about? Why do you think that is the case, Peter? Well, I think um, for business owners, some, often it's hard not to be in their business, and uh, they often re rely on the experience and the networks and the relationships that the CEO or the owner has with suppliers and customers that they've built up themselves. And with small teams in the business, it isn't always possible to confidently leave the business in the hands of the team. There's no one to lead the reins to, and um, so, and so in some cases, the team may not have the capability or competence uh, or the desire to even step in. So, yeah, it's very difficult for, for uh, you know, owners and CEOs to, to step away. Yeah. And, and Christine, you know, can a CEO or founder ever really take a break from work? And what is the impact on the business if they don't? Well, yes, they absolutely can and absolutely must take a break. But if they don't, they're going to lose their passion. If they haven't lost it already, they're going to lose that passion and energy. And for a leader, that is essential because if you're not if you're not mirroring what you want your people to do, it doesn't work. And the tighter you get, the more the burden uh, is there. And so taking a break is absolutely vital. And I know that it's a scary thing for some people to hand it over to someone else, but it makes one huge difference when you come back. Yeah, and Christine, in previous episodes, you've talked about passion. You know, passion is your vision. And, uh, you know, it's a very thing that motivates your employees. I mean, do you want to, do you want to sort of elaborate a little bit more about when that when the, when the company owner is, is tired and burnt out, what happens with that passion and that vision? Well, you know, passion is an energy, isn't it? It's a form of energy. And it's really hard to keep that momentum going if you're exhausted. And I see so many people at senior levels exhausted at the moment and they've got loads of leaves stored up. And you know, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the crew and something will crack. Everyone keeps thinking that they can keep going. You can't. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really um, difficult situation. I mean, I think we have it ingrained in us as, as being parents, you know, uh, look after your children before you look after yourself. But the reality is, if you don't look after yourself, you actually don't uh, do a very good job as a parent. And I always remember at the parent centre when I had my first child, they're always saying, rest when you, your children are resting. And you're like, but I've got laundry to do. I've got cooking to do. And we just have this thing ingrained in us. It's, it's really, really a, a hard thing that human beings have as a flaw that we actually don't use as an opportunity, you know? And Catherine, I do think that people think they're taking a break and they go away and they take their work with them and oh. they have their phone on and they answer all their emails. That's not a break. That's not giving you back the energy you desperately need. Give it to somebody that you trust. Yeah, I see Peter smiling and I, <laughs> I feel like a ganging up session going on here. Guilty as charred, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to move quickly along to, from, uh, from, from this conversation. Um, good thing, I love how you talk about passion. You know, I say to many business owners, it's clear you're not in love with what you do. Um, which turns into the question of when did you last have a break? Whether you're beginning to feel the whisper of CEO burnout or it's a return of an already friend, old friend, what are some tips for rediscovering the passion you once had for your work and in turn helping your employees do the same, Christine? Oh, it, it is refreshing yourself. And, you know, there's... 
yes, you need to take holidays. That's the number one thing. But we can refresh in all kinds of ways. Once you've done that, it's being exposed to other people's ideas and being stimulated. You know, I read the Harvard Business Review. I love it. It's written in very simple terms. Never be put off because you think it's going to be something you can't relate to we need to be stimulated so when you've had that rest and you're having a rest regularly be stimulated by other people and the things they've done and achieved I love that I, works for me yeah and I love how you talk about being stimulated by uh, resources like Harvard and uh, Forbes and you know even last night I was reading about Tony Robbins and it just absolutely resonated with me you know here at the engine we're always talking to business owners and their employees about their emotions and connecting with them and understanding how to turn even those negative emotions into opportunities you know what is a negative emotion these days it's an emotion whether it's, whether it's deemed as positive or negative it has an opportunity to become something else and and owning it so um all those things are just absolutely on point peter you own multiple businesses and you work as a business advisor helping business owners you know burnout is circumstances um you know it's different for everybody um however the common theme is a lack of work-life balance and inability to disconnect from the business and blurred boundaries being the major contributors Peter, how do you manage burnout personally and what advice do you give other business owners to see what they're suffering from burnout? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's really important for business owners to set clear goals for their teams and the business and then to keep the, their people focused on the delivery of them. So you've got a you've got a, a, a ship that's sailing in the right direction with the right people on board and they know where they're going. I think that's really important. Um, it's important also that, you know, we don't take it all upon ourselves to do all the work to achieve those goals. And uh, I think if, if doing that in advance before we're having your breaks will take a lot of stress out. Um, the other thing is plan for short breaks. So, you know, even if it's, you know, uh, a morning a week or or the you know, long weekends from time to time, and then to plan that longer break, which gives you that real opportunity to recharge and energize to, so you can then be looking forward to the break but and build up to it but also looking forward to coming back from it energized and refreshed as as you talked about previously um and a lot of owners leave it until they're either near burnout or they're or, or, or close to it anyway um before they decide it's time for a break and i think planning it in advance and sticking to it and building your business around knowing that those are the scheduled times just like managing your calendar just out about having you know, you know scheduled events and, and meetings schedule the breaks schedule the time out um, and I guess the key thing for me is making time to do things that make you happy. Spend time with your family, your friends, exercise, travel, whatever it is, anything you like to do on your own personally or with others, that should be part of what you include in your break. I guess I have a little bit of a personal insight to you when you like cooking, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I have to stay out of the kitchen, not because I, I have to stay out, but just away from the stove. I haven't cooked in such a long time. I, I need to, I need to kind of go back to cooking lessons. I think. Um, look, it's a really interesting uh, topic, really. I mean, I remember um, when Teresa Gatting uh, basically came out and she said, "Look, she was on her way to a board meeting, and she started having chest pains, and um, and and she thought, oh gosh, am I." having you know a heart attack and she carried on and she got to the board meeting oh I think she got to the board meeting or she might have turned around and left the board meeting before she got there and it was just burnout and um when I say just burnout I don't mean it like just burnout it was burnout and uh you know we're not invincible we're, we're human beings um and uh, it's about recognizing uh you know I mean obviously even Jacinda Ardern you know she said I just don't have enough left in the tank to carry on and deliver and it takes a lot of bravery and uh, and for someone to be vulnerable and courageous to do that. And uh, so, look, we just kind of like keep uh, people on track. You know, whenever we're working with businesses um, and CEOs, uh, business owners and CEOs, we, we not only get to understand the business well, but we get to know them on a personal level. In some cases, it's important to have what I call excuse the expression, uh, come to Jesus moment. Um, and what that really means is we really drill down on dissecting the personal and tactical reason for why they can't step away. Um, we look at how as a business owner, CEO, uh, they can be uh, engaged driving strategy and value, uh, which is what they need to be. It's a lane they need to be in, um, while empowering others with them to take on more responsibility in the day-to-day -day strategy and in the trenches. The question is why they don't do that. So, um, you know, having having all of us been in leadership role and owning businesses, 
knowing the importance of solid leadership, um, how do we get someone to reimagine their work calendar? You just talked about that before, Peter, about the calendar. How do you get them to reimagine the calendar without them being in it? Yeah, um, some of it's about actually, as an owner, articulating the reasons or excuses, really, why you can't step away. So you kind of got to confront the barriers that you put up in, in front of yourself. So people, you know, you, you often have conversations with people and, and they'll say, oh, yeah, look, I'm really busy. Oh, I'm too busy to take a break. You know what I mean? Or I've got work to do on the weekend. And those excuses and things, I think, need to be taken head on and actually up, you know, confront them, identify them and look at them and go, you know what? I need a plan to overcome these excuses and then actually focus on making that plan work. And it's techniques like delegation, upskilling, empowering your people. They're all ways to consider to putting in a plan so that you don't have to be in the business all of the time. And it's essentially having a business continuity plan that operates without you. Um, we talk about disaster recovery. Well, this isn't a disaster. It should be a normal business as usual, which is, you know, you don't have to be in it all the time. There are times when you do need to be in it, but not all of the time. And it's about having a plan and scheduling and sticking to the schedule of when you're not going to be in it. Yeah, we, we discuss this all the time. And I'm glad you touched on that business continuity planning because, you know, people do cash flows and they do marketing strategies and, and you know, they do sales strategies, but they forget about actually testing what will happen if I'm not here or someone mm. else is here rather than waiting until that person goes on leave and then it's kind of a reactive situation. Um, Christine, what are your thoughts about taking power back and having business owners reimagining their work calendar? Well, you know, as I said before, that's quite hard to do when you're not feeling fresh. Mm. Um, you do need to approach it when you've got some headspace and people need to make that headspace, as Peter said. And I also um, noticed that those who are thinking about ending their career, you know, it's coming time to sell their business or whatever, just don't have the same oomph in terms of running it. And it's the time that you need to put the most into it or have someone else put the most into it because when you sell it, it's got to be operating perfectly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not you that has to put your head back in. You do need someone else like us who will come in with fresh eyes and keep it going to that level. It doesn't have to be every day. It's, it's a process that we help you to feed. And I think that's really important. If you're in the habit of doing everything yourself, it's a very, very hard habit to break. And what will break it at the end of the day is your health. If you don't take care of it, your health will catch up with you. And I think men tend not to take care of themselves. We women are more onto it, I have to say. Men push it away. So, you know, it, it is something that's very, very important. Yeah, look, I, I'm, I totally agree with you. I mean, at the end of the day, um, having someone who can come in and give that injection and help you build that value proposition is absolutely key. And, um, you know, it, it also gives you the ability to um, have a co-pilot and suddenly not be alone in business. So brings me on to the perfect timing, talk about our service offering here at the, uh, the Engine. So for quite a few years now, we've all been working with business owners and CEOs as their co-pilots and sometimes pilots. Um, people go, really? Someone stepped, someone said to me, you, say, you mean someone stepped out of their business? And I go, yeah, absolutely. They trust us to do that. We're not there signing off bank um, transfers and stuff like that, we're there to help uh, empower the people and, uh, you know, and just make sure that things run smoothly. So I love discussing, and you mentioned it just before, um, uh, Christine, you were talking about fuel, and I love discussing fueling founder energy. Um, you can't inspire others, you can't bring success and purpose for a business if you're running on empty. Some of the businesses we work with, we sit in their business as a pilot or co-pilot for half a day or one day a week as their interim CEO. Sometimes we're there for a longer period working with the businesses to bring on a new leader captain or are there to assist as part of their key person insurance where they've needed to step away, but they just need us in there temporarily. Um, and sometimes we even remain on the journey while we build CEO capability. We've got CEOs and company owners coming in who've got zero capability and they really do need us. Either way, having an outside influence and leadership is motivating and builds confidence for CEOs and business owners to step away. Peter, how important is our service offering of hiring an interim CEO for the businesses that you currently work with? 
I think for the, you know, the right business, I think it's it's really, really important. I think, you know, we know the difference it can make. And um, I guess a key factor in it is that as much as the owner or the CEO needs to have confidence in in, in us that we can deliver and, and provide support to them, it's also important that their team have the same confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we bring to it as well as being able to get alongside the team that are there and you know, gain their trust and build a rapport and be able to show that we we know what we're doing, we can help them. We're not there to take over, we're there to support, we're there to provide leadership and, and, a, uh, and a sounding board. Um, and our offer ensures that the staff feel that support and yet they're still encouraged to take the ownership of getting things done in the business and dealing with issues, but they know that they have an experienced senior leader on site or on call to support them. And often all they need is someone to validate or give an okay to their approach to a, to a problem and, and, and implement a solution. And that's the, the breadth of experience that we have to be able to make those assessments, give those judgments and really support them to, uh, to do what they know needs to be done. Yeah, I like how you talk about solution. I remember years and years ago, uh, I used to have a, a little little poster on my door and says, uh, bring all your problems through my door, but with a solution. So um, never once did anyone come through without a solution. Because at the end of the day, it gets people thinking mm -hmm. about a different way. And more often than not, probably 98% of the time, I said, yeah, you're really on track there. You know, um, go out there and, and make it happen. So, Christine, just coming back to you, you know, what are your thoughts around the engine service offering or working with one of us on a, on hiring an interim CEO? I mean, why one of us over a trusted accountant or trusted lawyer? Well, you know, those people have specific skills. They have skills in the law and they have skills in finance. We're leaders. And I'm really proud of the fact that we're leaders because um, leadership is quite different than having that specific um, knowledge and ability and of course you call on those people when the time is right but they're not necessarily leaders and I think what you've got with the engine with the three of us uh, we're different personalities but we all agree in terms of how things should be done and we're reliant on each other so if we're not sure about something I don't mind picking up the phone and talking to Peter or to Catherine about whatever it is that's going on we've all proved our competency over years and years of leadership and management and you know it's about knowing who your client is knowing what they expect of you in that day or that week or that month and never crossing those boundaries. You do exactly what's expected of you, nothing more and certainly nothing less. But we're a team as well as individuals and you've got a choice of three quite different people, but we're complementary to each other. And I love how you say that. And I guess at the same time, we're future-proof our situation. So if one of us needs to take time out, we can pass the reins over quite comfortably and confidently to each other. And, and I've done that uh, myself over the last... A uh, short while with, you know, obviously having to, uh, you know, loss of my mum and my brother, you know, I've had to, to lean a lot more um, than normal. So, um, and we've got our provider community, as, as yes. good things there. We've got our official community that we can call on. So, um, you know, I have to say, uh, knowing the clients we work with um, and the work that we do with them uh, in, in terms of us sitting in there and, and, and helping them as a co-pilot or pilot, it's pretty special. Um, it, it shows the trust that people have in us. Um, you know, we've got clients with burnout who can now take a break without their phone being on their hip 24 over 7. We had, that, we had a client over Christmas who has never had a break, and Peter and I managed that. Um, I've been with the client now for six years, but Peter and I managed that simply because um, Peter had already met some of the people and it was just a case of checking in. Um, and we see that their staff are less dependent on them. You know, the clients come back and go, they're not asking me questions anymore. I go, because they know what they're doing and they're, they're doing it well. Um, and we've got clients clients stopping us in their tracks to say their confidence has improved with our involvement. And families and spouses thanking us for helping them see their spouse, mum or dad, during daylight hours at the start and the end of the day. Um, Peter, what, a dif what, what difference are you making in the space of being an interim CEO? Yeah, well, I, I like to think I'm making a big difference. And I guess the the testimony to that is the feedback from the, the people in the business. And, you know, you hear staff say that, you know, they hate to bother the owner after hours or on the days off, you know, when, they, uh, when they're when they out of the office or out of the business, but that often they, the team don't have any any other option, really. And so having uh, one of us in, the, in their business as an interim leader supporting them, we're really a support person that they can go to in the event that the owner's out of the business temporarily. Um, and that makes a big difference because that means they're not on their own. They still have access to a trusted leader 
but they're also leaving the business owner to have that break that they so desperately need. Um, I think one of the key roles too of the of, of being in that interim leadership space is to help build that capability and competence in the people in the business. It's one of the key sort of legacies we can leave when we when we uh, have finished the, the the assignment is that the people in the business feel more empowered that they feel like they've built some capability and we've endorsed their competency to deal with things that come along. Um, and that's got to be good for the business. And whilst we're not always a subject matter expert in their industry, we've got a proven track record in business and leadership, and we know how to approach challenges, overcome them using you know, processes and experience, and also how to lead the people to, to achieve the uh, the solutions that uh, that need to be to be delivered in the business. Yeah, look, we've definitely got uh, a lot of experience in getting alongside lots and lots of different people and personalities, and I think that's what really is testament to what we do. We're people people, um, and therefore we um, get alongside them, but we also know where we need to, you know, help them and 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 uh, take them further on that journey. So, look, you know, for burnout prevention. For me, um, I, and, and Peter knows as well, and you, Christine, and the work you've seen, is I like to provide allocated time for me to focus on making innovation a priority. When I make space to be creative, and, and I love creating uh, things from, you know, specific things from art or graphics, or it gets me out of the trenches, and I use creativity to be productive, providing me that filter I need for burnout. So I might be going through my normal week doing what I'm doing, and I come up with an idea, and I go, right, I'm going to capture this innovative idea and I'm going to spend some time on it. I'm going to take myself out and do that. Yes, I'm still working, but it gives me that fuel that I need, that excitement uh, about what I'm doing. Um, Christine, what have you recommended to business owners when you're working with them as an interim CEO for burnout prevention? Oh, look, it's all the things we've talked about. It's actually things like spending time with your family too, because that feeds you. But there are some people who like to just be locked away, and I'm one of them. You know, I have a very active uh, life that's full of people. And my downtime is to be at home with my husband and the dogs and in a place that I love and I feel safe where I can read and watch rubbish on Netflix <laughs> because that's the break. You know, all of us need feeding. Like, I'm a very high-energy, very passionate person. I do everything with great vim and vigour no matter what. And if I, I've learned as my life has gone along that if I don't take that time out, whatever it is, I can't keep up this energy level, and that's what I'm proud of. You know, I'm proud of the way that I can operate in such a positive way I couldn't do that unless I'd learn to take breaks sometimes it's just a weekend sometimes it's an afternoon but you also need those blocks mm -hmm. of time where you're truly not thinking about your business yeah yeah and it's having those hard conversations too to get them to that point because a lot of the time people will just not want you to know where they're at no. and um and and so you know just talking about our own life experiences gives us that credibility so um, it's not a case that you uh, will get burnt out. It, it's a case of when it'll happen, okay? Uh, you need to be operating at a level of stimulation to your team and not as a dependable. When you feel your founder or leader energy, you stimulate that passion for success, you become more inspiring and your team feed off that and are more engaged and productive. Last week when I was talking to the directors of Steelpack, um, I discussed the four C's of being a leader, you know, caring, courageous, consistent and being credible. And hiring you as an interim CEO, how important are the four C's in your involvement, Christine? Totally. They're, they're the core. Yeah. Well, those those C's are really important. Yeah. They're everything. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely are. Like I said, getting alongside the people, you've got to show that you care and, uh, you know, we're courageous. We 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 go to places that most people go. Oh gosh, I could never do what you do. And you go, well, actually, you can. Because we, it's a. I don't know about you, Christine. But I can speak from experience. Sometimes I'm nervous about going to those places. Mm, absolutely. And it's pushing myself to that level of discomfort that really gets me really having my true growth and uh, um, being consistent is so so important. And that credibility piece. So, um, if you've got anything more that you might want to add from your own well, personal experiences. We are very committed to giving great service to business and we would never let our business down or your business down. I mean, that that's our reputation. That's what we pride ourselves on. So when you get to know us, you know, it's about 
meeting somebody and understanding their competency and how they will look after things for you. But I think you'll be impressed and we won't let you down because that's letting ourselves down. And that's not something any of us want to be part of ever. No, because you just added another two Cs. We're going to have another <laughs> six Cs. We've now got commitment and competencies in there. So uh, um, you heard it right here. We've now got six Cs. So um, Peter, you you have had a company owner advise you that being here meant he was able to have a break with confidence, knowing you were there, ultimately re-energizing. And another company owner provided you with autonomy to manage leadership training and accountability on the one day you worked with them what are the benefits of a rested owner along with the benefits of having you as a co-pilot supporting the team as a senior leader and how hard was it to make each situation happen I mean gaining the confidence of the owner to be hands off and staff to trust you is quite a big thing right yeah it is look I think the benefits really are pretty pretty uh, uh, consistent um taking time out as an owner or CEO is, is absolutely essential because they need to achieve that quality rest, as we've talked about before. It helps them gain mental clarity and reduce stress, but it also allows them to actually have that freedom from the business to think about the future for their business and to have that sort of unencumbered time to think about it without the interruption or the or the the, the day to day uh, and you know, things that happen in a business. So that that allows them to actually be, although they're taking a break, they still get the opportunity to think positively about the future for the business without being encumbered by the day-to-day -day. Um, and I think by having a senior leader in there to help while they're in that space means their mind doesn't have to focus and wander back to what's happening in the business I'm worried about this what if what if because someone's there so it actually really it provides a double kind of whammy um, and gaining the confidence of the owner is very much about gaining the, the trust of the staff because by engaging with them if they're comfortable with you they can see that there's a quick rapport, then uh, the, the CEO will know they're leaving them in good hands. And I think that's a really key thing is engaging with the people really quickly and easily and uh, giving them confidence that you're not there to change anything or, or upset the apple cart. You're there to support them to do what they do well. Absolutely. So, you know, the companies I work with uh, as an interim CEO, they've seen accountability, capability, performance and trust through my involvement. I love it when my staff currently and previously say enjoy your holiday we've got this but it's scary when I to start with but hey uh, I feel so happy to have invested in my team with a culture of learning training and challenges that come with problem solving when I had 90 staff I had a sign on my door and I just talked about that before for every problem that comes through the door it has a solution empowering staff for me is so important uh, as is providing pathways this is the benefit we provide and we bring to the table um, as co-pilot or temporary pilot. We approach it from a different angle and we can see their leader benefit from taking a break and having a co-pilot. Christine, what benefit is there in hiring an interim CEO to one of us for business? I know we've talked about it, but why hire you? Well, I think we know, we understand what's keeping you awake at night because we've been there, we've done it, and we've learned how to cope with it and how to how to get through it. And that is having someone by your side that you can trust. And you can trust us. I can verify it. Yeah. And I look, I talk to many business owners and they say nighttime can be so long. So, so long when you're constantly just, con you know, thinking about all the stresses that you take from the day and then it's Groundhog Day, you're back again doing the same thing. So yeah, it's not absolutely. A, not a healthy place. Peter, why hire you as an interim CEO? I like to think that I've got you know proven experience of already operating in this space with with existing clients. Um, I'm a pretty practical, pragmatic uh, leader as well. Uh, I don't have to have all the the answers, but I um, help with the team and the people that are in the business to bring out the right solutions. Um, you know, a long, strong corporate background means that I've I've been exposed to a lot of processes and systems and training and learning that I can translate and bring across. At, at, a, at, at any level, not, not just at, at that corporate level. Um, and you know, I like to help think that I help people feel less alone uh, in what they're doing um, and help them also build some planning so that things are less reactive and more, pro, you know, more planned and, and proactive. Um, and I think also you know, hiring us uh, or me in particular as a CEO to step in and help your business just means it's an investment you know, that you can put into your business and we'll help your team keep humming, help keep your, your team supported and make them feel valued so that when you come back all refreshed there they're refreshed as well 
Yeah, I love how you said the word investment. I, I'm, you know, I'm just so humble. We have a lot of clients that just really understand the value of the investment and not the cost. They never see it as a cost. They just see it as an investment and uh, they see the benefits of that. You know, they get clarity, they get transparency, visibility. Uh, they've got people who are empowered and smiling and staying and it's just so much so much goodness. It, it's like a a bowl of food that just nourishing uh, uh, when when we come along. So, um, look, let's uh, let's kind of wrap this up with closing remarks. Um, you need to to build a business that can operate with and without you. You know, working with us brings a win win outcome for everyone, your team, your client, for you. Confidence is contagious. When you're arrested, having a co pilot. And I knew you were going to laugh at that. Uh, but it's true. Like people people just say all the time, gosh, when you're here, you just light up the room. And, and I feel it. I feel that energy change. And it's so important for businesses to, to, to have that in their business. Like I walked in, I don't know about you guys, but I walked into places and everybody is dead. They're all dead. Oh, They're yes. not. Yeah. Oh, yes. They're just not talking. They don't want to be there. They're just there for the paycheck. They're, they're just miserable. Um, and so, you know, when you can build confidence, it's contagious. It spreads. Um, you know, when you're rested and have a co-pilot, you can pass the rain for a while and you build that confidence. Christine, where to next? Well, you know, the power of the boss is the power of the crew. And it you, you just need somebody different to help. So look, contact us, meet us, um, see us as a team, see us individually and see which one it is that you connect with most. But remember that we all support each other. We all look after each other. So you're getting quite a package when you get one of us. You really get three of us in many ways. So I really believe that you can trust us. As I said to you before, we would not let you down because it's letting ourselves down. And I'm really proud of the experience we have and the different abilities and the different approaches, and they do get results. That firing up your people, giving them their energy back, because if you're not doing it, I'm telling you, they won't be doing it. If you look at them and wonder why they're a bit down and a bit slow, you need to take a look at you and let us help you. That's what we're here for. Lead by example, right? And yep. uh, if you're burnt out and tired, that's what your team's going to be. I like how you said, Richard, I mean, it starts with a conversation. If you can't afford to lose your health or your business, de-risk it by hiring Christine. Peter, last statement from you. I think um, it's important that owners think about their people and their clients and uh, the risk to their business if, if their, their owner is, is, is burnt out and unable to be in the business. It means that you're leaving your people and your clients exposed and you want to give them confidence that you are energised, refreshed and, and uh, able to be the leader that, uh, uh, that you can be and be that way all of the time um, and not be burnt out and having to bounce and drop drop to a low a low and then bounce back and we bring that sort of empowerment that helps drive a spring in the team step we help give you that break uh with confidence um and that helps your people to step up even uh when you're actually there as well it helps it'll actually create a whole new environment for them um that will exist while you're there or while you're not yeah, look, absolutely spring in your step just just goes with that whole confidence is contagious aspect um mm. Many of you will be watching us and, and you'll be you'll be scratching your head going, how can this even be possible? You know? And and how come I, I haven't even heard about it? Well, you're hearing it here right now. You know, it's easy to forget how imperative a healthy captain is. Hiring an interim CEO is a smart, strategic move for CEOs and business owners to take a break, engage with a regular break and or bring on board a co-pilot to provide capability where the business is lacking. And I'm talking about a co-pilot where you don't have to share your shares in the business. It's not splitting those dividends up. Don't wait until it becomes a reactive solution. For many of our clients, we also stay on the longer journey with them. And believe it or not, whilst you think the financial aspect or the staff shortages or even the stock shortages might be a problem for your business, the actual real blind spot in your business is burnout. And if you're suffering from burnout, I guarantee you every other pocket of your business and your personal life will be suffering. So take charge of your life, your business, and start a conversation with us. 
even if it's just to have a chat, you never know where it might go. And that's it from us. Have a great uh, rest of your week, everybody. And we'll see you back here next week with another topic. Um, and thank you very much for the feedback that we've been getting. I know that a lot of people have been enjoying it. And so glad to have you in person here, Christine. Um, to be here. Thank and you. yeah, and we might not let her go. So, um, But uh, thanks, Peter, for your time. And uh, we'll see everybody again next week with a new topic. Absolutely. Bye, everyone.